What's up you guys? Jeff Anderson here, One Fish, Two Fish. For those of y'all who don't already know that, um, I do this YouTube channel along with my wife, Christy, and we do inshore shallow water saltwater fishing. That's our passion, that's what we love. And so, um, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I can like almost see my breath. It's pretty cold, we're getting into winter time. So for this video, uh, let's talk about some of the fundamentals of inshore saltwater fishing. I'm actually gonna show you guys behind me all my tackle, what I use. So again, if you guys have been inshore saltwater fishing for your whole life, then this is also a good video for you just to, I don't know, check out somebody else's tackle box and see what they're fishing. So for inshore saltwater fishing, uh, let's just start with some of the basic equipment. Um, most people are going to be using something that is more or less largemouth bass fishing tackle. And this is, these are my two uh, kind of go to samurai swords or fishing poles, if you will. Um, these are favorite. Everything, by the way, that I talk about, I will leave a link in the description below. So if you guys are interested specifically with what I'm using, then you know you can get that here on this video. Just click on the description and you can see what I'm using. And for my reels, uh, Christy and I uh, are huge fans of Florida Fishing Products reels. Um, so this is the Florida Fishing Products Osprey. Um, and these reels are super durable. They are priced affordably. And we just think that they're the best uh, reel out there for the money that you pay. Uh, you can beat these oh, things man, up. Awesome. And so Christy and I, um, this is what we use. Definitely not trying to sell you guys on anything. You know, you guys use whatever you feel confident, whatever you feel comfortable with. This is just what we use. Um, so we use a combination of 3000 series and 4000 series reels. For those of y'all who are brand new to fishing, um, that's just a notation for essentially the size of the spool capacity and the drag capacity, specifically how big a fish that you can catch. Um, if you have a 1000 series reel, then that's what we consider like a micro reel. That's what's something you're gonna use for like panfish, bluegill, crappie, um, even, you know, just super small, fun fish that you'd catch in like a little pond. You know, when you get to the 2000 series, then that's more or less uh, your go-to 2500 series for largemouth bass. Um, so that's why for us, the 3000 series, um, we feel, and so that goes all the way up to like an 8000, 10,000, which are just massive, um, you know, reels that you can use for tuna or sharks, um, you know, some of your larger beasts of the sea. Uh, but that's why um, if, you know, you're going to just get one, then that's, this is kind of my go-to setup right here, either a 3000 or 4000 series um, that will allow you to catch the majority of your inshore saltwater species. Um, we also have uh, a fly rod. Uh, this not going to do too much tutorials on fly fishing because that's kind of a whole separate um almost like sport within inshore saltwater fishing but um you know a lot of people do prefer to use a fly rod and for a lot of the species like redfish um and even trout uh bonefish and tarpon then a, a fly rod is um you know, one of the kind of go-to things there. I would consider it like if you're snow skiing and you're familiar with that analogy, this is kind of like a black diamond, you know, type, you know, thing. This is like a black belt. You know, if, if you can catch uh, a fish uh, on the fly in salt water, then that's uh, pretty commendable. So these are the, this is a, a fly rod. This is an eight weight. And um, you're typically going to be using something like a clouser, which is really just like a, bucktail uh miniature bucktail that imitates like a um glass minnow or a small bait fish in the ocean so that's for the fly rods um the other um type of fishing rod and reel setup that's that is very common for inshore saltwater fishing is the bait caster and so the bait caster is very popular for bass fishing um, but you know again for inshore saltwater fishing if you don't if you're coming from bass fishing and you're going to the ocean and you just want to catch some fish, then um, your bait caster can absolutely make um, a great option. 
uh, for catching fish. I'm a huge fan of keeping things simple. That's why for this, I just use a book bag. I bought this book bag at TJ Maxx. I bought this duffel bag at TJ Maxx. So these are not like, this is a Nike duffel bag. This is what I keep all of my gear inside and when I'm wade fishing or if I'm going out on a buddy's boat, then I'm just gonna put it here in this kind of more durable book bag that I got at TJ Maxx. So with that being said, let me go ahead and I'm actually gonna give you guys a full synopsis of my gear and we're gonna talk about the fundamentals of kind of like each part of, we call this terminal tackle. So terminal tackle is your bait, it's your hooks, it's things that are not, um, this would be equipment, this is your rod and reel. Um, terminal tackle is, yeah, again, bait, hooks, lures, that type of stuff. So that's kind of like a fishing term for any of y'all who are just getting in to fishing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna strap on my GoPro and I'm gonna give you guys a first person kind of rundown of everything that I use is if I was going through this with you guys in person. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll see you guys in a second. All right, y'all, so this right here is essentially, this is like the fundamentals of my tackle box. This is what I use. Um, I would say 75 to 80 percent of the time and I actually put this down here so that I can give you guys a better view of that this is really what I use 75 to 80 percent of the time and for those of y'all who are getting into saltwater fishing um, you have this is what we like to call a soft plastic this here is what Christy and I here at one fish two fish this is what we use probably more than 50 percent of the time just because of how versatile that it is um if you want to really keep things simple you just want to get out there you just want to catch fish then all you need to do is just purchase some of these these are these are jig heads and this is a quarter ounce jig head right here and get yourself you know soft plastic like a shrimp um or uh you know anything that this is another um, popular bait that Christy and I use. This is like an assortment that we just kind of put in one bag, shrimp, um, and just some of these like little plastic minnows. Um, but you put one of those here on this jig head and watch our tutorial video on how to fish a Berkeley gulp um, and you will catch fish, guaranteed. So if you wanna just keep things very simple, then I would recommend if you only had one thing and if I only had one item to fish with in my tackle box, then it would be a jig head with a soft plastic. It's super versatile. Um, you can use it really in almost any scenario, almost. Um, just the other things that I pulled out, you know, just kind of to give you guys just a very good synopsis of kind of the fundamentals of the main types of lures and baits with inshore saltwater fishing. Um, so this is a spoon. Um, and this right here is one of the oldest lures ever used, ever invented. Um, and they've used these almost 100 years ago. This was like the first lure that people would actually use to catch fish with. And it's still to this day one of the most effective just because when it goes through the water, it looks like a minnow. Uh, and it, it can spin, it kind of turns, and it just it, it, it flutters throughout as you're... Um, uh, you know, retrieving this. So this is a spoon and we have a video of us catching a bunch of nice red fish, red drum on the spoons. You guys can watch that on how to use these. Um, so you've got a spoon. Again, we've got jig heads, different sizes. You know, you can use, um, this is just a larger jig head. Um, and we'll talk about that in kind of later videos but just so that you all kind of understand the basics not to get ahead of ourselves um you've got you know just your soft plastic here and you know we just put that on this jig head um you do have different types of jig heads this is a heavier jig head i would use this one if i was fishing actually out there in my local waters of the chesapeake bay we've got the chesapeake bay bridge tunnel which is actually right here you can't see it because i'm filming on a gopro and it's a 30 mile bridge um, but we use jig heads more or less like these ones um, when we're fishing 
on the uh you know kind of deeper uh 20 30 to 40 foot depths uh that we're going to be using this is a half ounce jig head um and i would probably be using a one to one and a half and sometimes two ounce you know jig heads when you're fishing the deeper waters um but again not to get ahead of ourselves um you also have these ones i love this style of jig head it's got it looks like a fish eye you know in the top of it and this is um really if you're just uh fishing in shallow waters anything from one foot to five to ten feet then this is pretty much going to be my go-to right here um this is anywhere from a one eighth to a quarter ounce jig head is what you're going to use you're going to base the weight of your jig head whether you're going to fish a heavier jig head or a lighter jig head that's going to be based off of um, really like the depth of the water that you're fishing in. For instance, here's some footage. If I'm fishing in a marsh area that's two, three, two to three feet deep and there's a bunch of submerged grass and weeds, then I'm going to fish something that is um, lighter, much lighter. Um, also in the winter time, you know, because it's lighter, it's going to have a slower fall rate, you know, so that's going to, um, also allow more time for the fish to attack your lure. Um, another style of hooks that I like to use for inshore saltwater fishing, um, is these are weedless hooks. And, um, so these, instead of the weight being on top, the weights actually on the hook itself. Um, and let me show you an example of how this would apply. So let's say that I'm fishing an area um, where there's a lot of grass, then that's where um, by rigging this one weedless, and for those of y'all who are familiar with bass fishing, this is a essentially like a Texas rigged, um, you know, bass fishing uh, kind of set up there. So, um, that's how that you would rig that. So it's just going to fall, uh, with the, you know, you got the weight right here in the shank of the hook. Um, and this will allow your lure to swim through the grass and to, um, not pick up as much grass. Obviously, if let's say you're using something like this that's very heavy and you're only fishing two feet of water and there's a lot of grass, then you're not going to catch fish because your lure is simply going to have grass all over it. So you're not going to be too productive there. So these are um, these are your soft plastics. The next uh, popular inshore saltwater bait is going to be what we like to call hard plastics. So this right here is one of the most popular, if not the most popular inshore saltwater hard plastic. And this right here is a mirror lure. This is what we call a Miro Dean. And uh, that's just the style of lure, the model. But as you can see, it just imitates a minnow. Um, and uh, this will either sink uh, in the water or this they actually call these ones some of them will be suspending which means when you cast it out and let's say you're fishing three to four feet deep of water then they'll suspend off the bottom about you know two one to two feet below the surface and it'll just as you work it it'll you know imitate a minnow that's kind of struggling um another uh very popular type of lure for hard plastics you've got top water and so top water is, you know, definitely some of the most fun um, action that you can get in fishing, whether you're freshwater, saltwater, inshore, offshore, then, um, you know, top water is just awesome. I don't care who you are. Um, if you have an opportunity to fish top water, then I would always recommend to, yeah, try it. So, um, you know, this right here is a rattle trap. Um, rattle trap uh, actually, was uh, more well known for bass fishing, but they've uh, became much more popular for saltwater fishing. Um, these are super effective lures. So for hard plastics, this is, you know, for if you come from a largemouth bass fishing background, uh, this is a lipless crankbait. Um, and uh, 
you know, it's really used the same way. This is going to have a slow sink to it. And essentially it's going to have the same action as this one. Um, it's going to flutter, uh, you know, and kind of shimmer um, as you jerk it with your rod. Um, and uh, not to, again, get ahead of ourselves, but we'll do some tutorials on how to fish these in the future. So that's pretty much it right there, people. For inshore saltwater fishing, this really comprises um, your main types of lures that you're going to be using. So you've got your, um, you've got spoons, soft plastics right here with jig heads. Uh, and then you've got your hard plastics right here, top water. Um, some other things that I would recommend. <clears throat> so also not to complicate it, but there are some lures that are kind of a mix between. Uh, this is a soft plastic, but it's, it's almost going to have the same action as a hard plastic. You're going to fish it the same way. So this is a DOA bait buster. And these right here are super popular in Florida for snook fishing, red fishing, and trout. Um, so this is a DOA bait buster. If you're in Florida, then you've probably heard about this right here. Um, can use these really anywhere. Uh, Striper will certainly love these, but again, um, anything that kind of imitates um, a uh, predator fish, and, uh, predator fish's uh, prey, uh, a minnow, mud minnow, shrimp, um, then it's gonna be effective. So just some other things that I would recommend, some other fundamentals of inshore saltwater fishing. Um, you would, I would recommend that you have some fish grabbers. Uh, if you, um, you know, catch a fish, then the last thing that you wanna do is you land your fish, you catch it, but you're trying to get the hook out and your fish swims away. Um, I, we use these all the time. These are fish grabbers. So, you know, when you uh, just lock these down on the fish's lips, and um, that, that fish is not going anywhere. So typically when I'm taking out someone who's brand new to fishing and a lot of guides will use these, uh, when they land the fish, they'll you know, stick the fish grabbers in the fish's um, lips and you know, right there, this locks in and that fish is not going anywhere. Hopefully that helps you guys. Uh, you saw what's inside of my tackle box. You saw the fundamental um, lures to use for saltwater fishing. Uh, we will talk about in a separate video uh, using live bait, using the hooks and the weights and all those things. Um, so look for that video to come. Uh, but those are just the basics of inshore saltwater fishing from a gear standpoint. And that's what I have, that's what I use, that's what I fish with. And um, hopefully that helps you guys kind of get started or shows you guys some different perspective of what's inside of my tackle box. If you guys have any suggestions, if y'all have any suggestions for any of these videos in the future, what you wanna see for some tutorials, how to's, some tips, some extra perspective, please drop a comment below. If you're new to this channel, One Fish, Two Fish, we kind of like to pride ourselves on being a community YouTube channel. Um, so we are about you guys. That's what, that's why we do this channel. That's why my wife and I do it. We like to fish with y'all. We like to hear your feedback, um, positive feedback. We, um, you know, we are here for you guys. So anyways, with that being said, drop us a line, subscribe if you haven't, um, give this video a like, thumbs up, and um, that's all I got for now. So I'll see you guys on the next vid. All right, peace out.